problem is vitamin D is not a vitamin. It was never made to, to be put in the mouth. The, the system is a, a steroid hormone system that, that has always uh, began in the skin. And in the skin, um, ultraviolet B radiation makes uh, vitamin D, which then circulates in the body and uh, is metabolized by different organs. But um, uh, it was mis misnamed a vitamin when it was discovered back in, in the 30s. Hmm. Um, but but it's, a, it's a steroid hormone system, and that's, uh, that's very important because as people put on sunblock and read that ultraviolet radiation is uh, worse than arsenic, and they <laughs> li live... They, they live their lives in a cave. A um, steroid but, hormone system. Yes. Uh, Very yeah. interesting. Uh, let, yes. let me put that on the back shelf, just on the front shelf, just for a second. Your, your point about people living in caves, running out in fear of the sun and ultraviolet radiation, uh, is cuckoo. And I've known this for a long time. I, I can't get out in the sun like I'd like to, but whenever I can, I do. I also happen to believe that properly used indoor tanning is safe and is probably a very good thing for most people to do in limited doses but that's just me I, I agree with that very good all right please go ahead well the reason that uh, it's important to understand that this is not a, a vitamin it's not a cofactor in an enzymatic reaction it's not an antioxidant it's an it's a steroid hormone and, and steroid hormones work in a very primitive way they go to your genetic code, they go to your genes, and they switch genes on and off. And vitamin D um, has about uh, uh, 1,000 to 2,000 genes that are direct targets of vitamin D. That is, approximately one-tenth of your genome is waiting to be told what to do. One-tenth? That's right, one-tenth. There's about 20,000 genes in the human genome. Incredible. And, and, and about, about up to 2,000 of them are waiting to be told mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. By they're vitamin waiting. D. That's, That's right. They're, they're, they're waiting huh. for the only messenger that can switch them on or off, and that messenger is activated vitamin D. That's a staggering statement. Yes. And it's important because um, people ask, well, what's the mechanism of action? And I say, well, what genes are you talking about? There's 2,000 different mechanisms of action for vitamin mm -hmm. D. That's uh, why you read about it in breast cancer and you read about it in heart disease and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis and autism and influenza because it's, it, it's working through different genes uh, in all those diseases. Do any other of the so-called vitamins, now this, again, we're going to say vitamin D is not a vitamin, do any other of the, of the other vitamins on the normal regimen and list and roster of things we're concerned with have anywhere near this kind of an impact on the body? No, no. There's uh, there, there's nothing uh, that, that comes close. Perhaps um, um, uh, I mean, if I was going to list a number two and number three and number four, I I would have difficulty doing it. Maybe magnesium, uh, you know, maybe omega three fatty acids. Uh, I, it's very hard to know. I mean, as these right. things do not work in the, in you know by themselves. Amazing. But, yeah. yeah. And the real the real important thing is that people used to go out in the sun. I mean, when when I was growing up, fresh air and sunshine was uh, the mantra. When I was growing up, if I walked into a drugstore, uh, I couldn't find sunblock. I could find coconut oil and moisturizers to increase the amount of the effect of uh, ultraviolet radiation on my skin, but the sunblocks didn't exist. Now, if you go into a drugstore, you can't find coconut oil or moisturizers. Everything is a sunblock. And Many of those sunblocks, obviously, as we've talked about for years on this program, contain chemicals that are not exactly healthful. That's true. In fact, uh, of the five major chemicals that are used in sunblock, uh, three of them are absorbed very rapidly through the skin directly into the systemic circulation. So, wow. Uh, it, it means it's almost like drinking it. Uh, uh, not, so, that that's, not that that's dangerous. I don't know that that's uh, dangerous, but it's probably uh, not a good idea. <laughs> is, are they designed to be transdermal, or is it just the kind no. of chemicals they are? It's just the kind of chemicals they are, and when the, when, uh, the FDA evaluates something like sunblock, they do not evaluate whether it's absorbed systemically and what the effects are. They evaluate whether or not it blocks ultraviolet radiation. Wow. So they don't really care if these things are transdermal uh, or not. I don't just know if they care. They, they, you know, bureaucracies, um, it's, it's, it's oh, easy to I say understand. conspiracy, but bureaucracies just work the way bureaucracies do. 
That's true. All, all very well said. Okay. Now, there's another thing that people do, which is, is to me, nuts. They, they go outside and they wear the biggest, darkest sunglasses they can, not understanding for a moment that ultraviolet radiation can, in fact, and does, enter your body through the eyes. That's correct. Yeah, there's a, a gland that was thought to be the soul for hundreds of years called the pineal gland that is directly stimulated by uh, radiation that enters the uh, eye and, and strikes the retina. It goes directly to the pineal gland. Wow. All right. So th- throw the sunglasses away, folks. It, just forget about being cool. Uh, as <laughs> You want to be healthy. You want to live long. All right. Let the sun in. It comes in right through your eyes. This is crucial. But more than that, it goes through the skin. How does how does the sun? We're going to take a break. Come right back, Dr. Cannell. How does the sun actually cause the creation of what we call vitamin D in the body? And having been an indoor tanner for a long time, I can tell you that there is no question that many doctors actually send their patients to tanning salons in the winter for what they call SAD or seasonal adjustment disorder. They get depressed. And that's one of the side effects of being vitamin D deficient, correct? Uh, yes, the vitamin D is probably one of the mechanisms of seasonal affective disorder, but there's probably a direct effect of light on the retina. Uh-huh. And then thirdly, there's, a, there's a, a direct effect of ultraviolet radiation on the skin itself. Oh. The, uh, the endorphins that mm-hmm. you make when you exercise yeah. are also made in the skin on exposure to sunlight. So Very good. Nature, nature rewards you. For sunbathing by giving you a shot of narcotics. Ah, amazing. All right, stand by. I'll be right back. Again, one-tenth of your entire genetic composition can be impacted and is impacted and affected, turned on, as it were, by vitamin D. Uh, if I'm not keeping that uh, too simplified, uh, Dr. Cannell, hope so. Uh, yeah, turned on or turned off. It depends upon whether the gene is making too much of that protein or not enough. It, wow. It varies with diseases. Uh, this could I, lead, the, excuse me, but this could lead to... I could imagine hundreds of potential problems of, to one degree or another. And if you look at the literature, it's very difficult to find a disease that has not been uh, where vitamin D has not been implicated in one way or another. The whole in, the whole field of infectious diseases is is, uh, is uh, uh, very rapidly taking notice of the fact that uh, vitamin D uh-huh. upregulates um, uh, naturally occurring antimicrobial peptides called cathelicidins. Right. Cathelicidins are, are uh, very potent uh, uh, antimicrobial uh, uh, peptides that, that work on viruses, bacteria. That any any microorganism with a cell wall, a cathelicidin just lyses it very quickly. And uh, huh. if you've ever stopped to think about uh, why, you know, why, why do people get colds and flu in the in the in the winter and very seldom in the summertime? Why, why is there? Why are we fearing this pandemic uh, in November and December? But we're we're pretty. I'm pretty sure that it's not going to affect us here in July and August. The reason is is because the population's vitamin D levels are about twice as uh, twice uh, in, in August they're about twice as high as they are in January. Okay, all right, just amazing. All yeah. right, so we need the sun.